It was God's like overwhelming love for me that it's not that I'm not picking you. This is, it's, this is because I've picked you. Because I picked you, I'm going to make you wait for the right thing at the right time. Hi, friends. Come on in here. This is Joyce Myers' Talk It Out podcast, where Joyce teaches the Word of God in her practical, no-nonsense way. And my friends and I talk about the stuff of living it, and we hold nothing back. I'm Ginger Stocky <laughs> with Jay Williams and Aaron Cluley, three friends <laughs> who are all in very different stages of life and know the importance of having honest, loving women around you and of having a signature smile when your name is called. When we need a little bit of help, <laughs> we call <laughs> our friend Joyce, and she walks us through life. And we're going to do that today. Yes. So we're mm-hmm. going to be giving Joyce a call because sometimes you just need to talk about life with your girlfriends. So consider yourself one of us and let's talk it out. Let's talk it out. How are you both today? I'm fabulous. I just feel great because I decided to wear a hat and you decided to wear a hat and Erin didn't decide to wear a hat. So <laughs> she got stuck in the corner over here by herself. <laughs> You're in time you right, Erin. <laughs> well, today we are going... Oh, wait. Wait. Before before I tell you about today. Come on. Just real quick. What's going to happen? The cra- oh, it's so dumb. It's the craziest <laughs> thing happened to me this morning. And it, it leads a little bit into our topic, but not really. It's just fun to tell. So... <laughs> When I woke up this morning, you know, you're, you're kind of groggy, you're half in, you're half out, and doing what I always do, and I'm just, you know, saying, good morning, Lord, and giving Him the day, and welcoming the Holy Spirit, and then a bird poop f- just fell right on my, my glasses, okay? <laughs> so, and it was so real. Now, realize so there was no bird in my room. I was not wearing glasses were you in inside bed. Or out? But I was, I was inside just waking up. So I obviously was not all awake. I was still dreaming. And all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden, you know, I'm like kind of waking up, but not really. And splat, bird poo. That's awful. On my glasses. And then I wake up and I'm like, that wasn't real. And then, you know, because I'm like I said, I'm not wearing glasses at all. It was it was the weirdest, weirdest thing. Do you ever have dreams you where you're kind of half awake and half not? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, Jay does not because Jay is baffled. I am shook. I do not know. <laughs> it happens. It happens. So then, you know, you realize, okay, that wasn't real. Because you start to think, it, my day's going to be crap, right? Because that's how it started. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> So then instead of feeling like that, you know, I started putting on the full armor of God. I'm fully awake at this point and everything is good. <laughs> there are yes. no birds. There are no glasses. I'm so, so relieved to hear since you hate birds so much. I know. I'm really glad there wasn't one there. It would have been a I terrible thing. I was really thing. just confused as to where you fell asleep last night, you know, just <laughs> because. <laughs> what is How did you not fall asleep in a gutter somewhere? <laughs> like, where, do you, where, do you, where do you fall asleep so you wake up and there's bird oh. poop on your face? Good to know is a dream, though. So today we are talking about... Those times in life where we're disappointed, where we don't get what we want, when God doesn't pick us, Mm -hmm. you know, and we all have those times, right? Where you Mm -hmm. feel like, come on, God, why them and not me? Yeah. 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 Do you guys have anything that comes to mind as an example of a time that you felt like you didn't get picked or you just didn't get what you wanted? I have a T-shirt that actually says "Ex Pharisee," no. <laughs> and that's it. I love that. But but because I was so judgmental, but because I I believed you, you you could choose the right thing. Mm-hmm. If you chose the right thing, then you'll get the desires of your heart. Yeah. And yeah. I thought that all of my desire, and I've talked about this before. I thought the desires of my heart were bathed in what God wanted for my life. Now, right. the older I get, I realize how how jaded that is. But sure. but. Because I did so much of the right thing, I thought it was a formula that if I did, it's very works based. Now it I know it should happen this way. Yes, I, I was. I've I, I realized, like I said, the older I get, and the more I do a lot more reflection, I realized that I, I was very much so works based, very much so performance driven, and so it was an if then. If I make this decision, then I'll get this yeah. outcome. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, in my life, I'd be like, but that's not fair. I did. This. I made all the right choices, and yeah. how did she get that, or how did he get that? And so, yeah, I've I've dealt with that. I deal with it better now. But growing up, I was definitely one of those people that was kind of like, "Wait, she don't deserve that." Do you know what she did? You know, yeah, like, yeah. very judgmental. And then that sure. old jealousy comes in. Yeah, and yeah. that gets ugly. Yes, yeah. true. I have 
I was just talking about this last night with my husband. Um, I shared with you guys that we're working through some things, and we were going to counseling last night, and which was great. But this topic came up, and so I, I told him, and he probably felt the same way about me too. Sometimes I feel like jealous of my friends, and I see their marriages, and I see them, mm. their husband does all these really great things for them, or this is happening to them and all this, and I... I got this, and mm. so it went both ways. I mean, that's not all on him, but but that's I think super it's, honest. Yeah, it's just it's honest. That's where I am. Yeah, well, and a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. and you see things on social media mm-hmm. that this look at what happened over here. Well, why don't I have that? What God did I not deserve to have yeah. that same kind of husband or whatever? So those kinds of things are very real. Yeah. yeah, can we can we can we dig deep a little bit real quick? Absolutely. Yes, do it. Well, go. Like when you talk about that, like mm-hmm. I've looked at your situation and I'm like, well, doggone it, God! Like at least her husband gets he wanted to go to counseling. Mm-hmm. Mine served me with papers, mm-hmm. right? You know, after right? things happened that weren't yeah. Not nice. So I was mm-hmm. I've looked at you like, mm-hmm. sure, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? You know, like yeah. how how do you when the when the story doesn't pan out the way. Mm-hmm. You think it should, because I was blown away that my situation didn't turn out in a way that he was more willing to mm-hmm. walk. The, I'm grateful now, like almost like almost a year and a half since I found everything out and moving forward. And I said 2021, like 2020 is not going to get a lot of energy in 2021. Like mm-hmm. I'm not spending a lot of time being bitter. I love him. God bless him in all of his endeavors. If you're watching, praise God for you. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but I still. <laughs> However, <laughs> well, 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 well. But um, I mean, I was jealous even of him. Like, how could he bounce back so quickly? Meanwhile, you did everything right. Yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't. It it's didn't not fair. feel. Well, nobody right. does everything right. Well, let's, did, let's be honest, right? We, are you I'm sure? Of, no, no, I did <laughs> okay, not. You do, guys, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm really close. I did no, not do everything right. right. But well, but I see what you're saying. You, right. feel, you like feel like I tried to follow right. God. I, exactly. Yes. Like there were lots of things that I mean, I did. I didn't do everything right at all. Right. But I, I think I did more right than not right, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. um, in that particular situation and of, of, you know, finding out about infidelity and then getting served with papers. It's like, wait, what? And then I look at your situation. I'm like, well, at least they're going to counseling. Mm-hmm. I didn't even want to do that. So you have mm-hmm. to fight with all kinds of why didn't God pick my story to end that way? Yep. Yeah. I, like I said, I'm better now because I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, but like, since you said that, I was just like, hey, Absolutely. just know, that's what I'm learning, right? And I'm yeah. learning that throughout everything, somebody's always looking to your story. It's like, well, why did mm-hmm. theirs turn out? Because I'm sure someone out there that's even watching today could look at my situation and be like, okay, yeah, well, she was served with papers, but she wasn't physically abused by him. Or, right. or you know, right. like she, There's you, know, you know, like, or she's happy and able to talk about it. You know, like yeah. y- it's just everybody has someone that is doing what they think is better than them. So right. just want to yeah. throw that in there. Yeah, no, that's, that's such good. a great point. And that's really what, we want to focus on. This has been actually a big problem for me, especially early in. Um, and I've learned how to deal with things, so it's really not so much anymore. And I'm so grateful because naturally, who who I am, I'm just very competitive naturally. Mm-hmm. Okay, and. I want things and I want things to go well. And so this could be a really big problem in my Mm -hmm. life. And being in television, television is a very competitive business. And the only way to really succeed, right, in the world's eyes is to be a little bit cutthroat. Mm -hmm. And that leads to all of this. That Mm -hmm. leads to that because you're never going to get everything you want. You're not going to get every job you want. You're going right. to get disappointments. You're going to be jealous, and you're going to be bitter if if you don't learn how to mm-hmm. deal with it in a different way. And I just I love I love to win, you know. And I had an experience early in my career where I had two jobs in a row that fell through. So mm-hmm. I had one job. Um, I went in my first day and. They looked at me and said, "You know, I'm I'm sorry. We we don't know who you are. We we don't. We don't. You thought you had it? Yes. I mean, I was I was called. I did. I interviewed. I got this job. I went in the first day, and they're like, we don't know what you're talking about. And so I I said, I'm so confused. And I told them who hired me, and they said, Oh, I'm sorry. He passed away. Oh my gosh! Isn't that awful? You had no proof that you. But no. That's terrible. So 
there I was. It's like, what happened, Lord? I thought I really thought you were yeah. opening a door for me, mm-hmm. and obviously I was sad that this poor man died. Yes, right. <laughs> that first, but it also slammed a door, you know. Yeah. That I was looking forward to. Yeah. So then, I got another opportunity and was told, um, you know, okay, we're going to start this in a couple weeks, and I kept calling and asking what to do and calling, and they just kept dragging it out. Two more weeks, two more weeks, two more weeks. And it never happened. Wow. wow. I, that job never happened. And once again, <laughs> I found out that the person who had hired me had moved on to another television station. Uh. Essentially, don't hire me because you're either going to die or lose <laughs> your job. <laughs> right. <It's- laughs> Good, good, to, good to know. Anyway, I, I started seeing other people in those roles. Mm. And, mm. oh, that jealousy thing was like, oh, what? Mm-hmm. what? God, I thought you had my back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought, you know, that this was a career that I'm giving to you. I'm not trying to do it for myself. Yeah. And yet it's really hard not to have yourself in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. So that jealousy got really big. And yeah. I, we'll talk as we go. But I had so much to learn mm-hmm. in this arena. Wow. It's a big one for all of us, I think. It is. And I don't think we realize it. Like, I don't think oh, I realized yeah. I didn't those realize. thoughts were jealousy. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, exactly what you're saying about me. Mm-hmm. I've had those exact same thoughts. Even, like, vice versa, like you mm-hmm. said. And and I don't realize what it is until you call it what it is. Yeah. Yeah. We got to call it like it is, or else we'll yeah. never fix it. Yeah. So what do you say? Shall we start with uh, what Joyce has to say about Let's this? Do it. So we're going to do that by um, just... Giving her a call today, and we're right. we're going to hear some teaching, of course. But I, I think we ought to just jump right in and go to the source. <laughs> <laughs> so let's give Joyce a call. Yeah. Hi, Joyce. Hey, how's everybody? Hi, Hello. Joyce. How we're are good. you? We're just being yeah. extra vulnerable today already, right off the bat. Yeah. Oh, you are. Okay. Well, I'm I'm going to be very private. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a first. Thank you for letting us know. I'm, I'm going to change my mo, and I'm going to be very private. <laughs> so Just funny. leave us hanging out here all by ourselves <laughs> with all of our jealousy problems. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, we are we are talking today about jealousy and how easy it is to be disappointed in something that God doesn't pick us for, doesn't give us that we want, and so. Right. You you have been through that yourself, I'm sure, right? Oh, yeah. We decide what we want, think we know where we should be and what we're good at. And it's kind of funny. It's like the saying goes, we plan and God laughs. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, I'm so glad that I've walked with God as long as I have because there's a few things that you find out by the time you get to be my age. And one of them is, is what's useless and what's not. And one of the things, it's like if you think about jealousy, it's like, okay, if I wanted to be on the worship team, which, thank God, I don't, but if I wanted to, I mean, not thank God for me, but thank God for the people. If, if I wanted to be on the worship team and I didn't get picked, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't get you the position that you wanted, and it doesn't keep the other person who got it from getting it. And so all it serves to do is just upset you and just plays into the devil's hands. I, I don't know. It just seems like that's become a bigger thing to me lately it's just like it's useless so you know worry does no good so why worry and, and jealousy is is another thing you can't really want what somebody else has if you don't want to do what they did to get it mm-hmm. exactly and, um, a lot of times we see what other people have and we want that just because it looks good but there's also a responsibility side that goes with everything and a lot of times we just want the thing without the responsibility so mm-hmm. that's true Jealousy is a bad thing. It can really mess you up. The Bible says it rots the bones. Mm. So Yeah. I love what you said too about it it being useless because once you start that thought of jealousy, like it's a spiral if mm-hmm. you don't catch yourself and you can go to a dark right. place. <laughs> really quick. Yeah. Yeah. And it all comes from insecurity. Yeah. It just it's true. It comes from not knowing who who we are and also from not trusting God. Right. Yeah. Ask God for what we want, and it's up to Him to open those doors. And you know, He opens doors and He shuts doors, and you just wear yourself out trying to get things that God's not getting. If you yeah put Him first, and He'll give you the things that are right for you to have when the time is right to have them. Like you said, we we do gain so much from experience and years. Mm -hmm. And I was just telling about a couple jobs that I didn't get that I really wanted that didn't work out, Mm -hmm. and I did learn through that that God had a a different plan yeah. 
And it ended up being a better plan, mm-hmm. which I didn't realize it at the time. And you don't always yeah. see that until you have years later. Right. So right. learning to trust God that his plan for us is good when it looks really bad at the moment mm-hmm. yeah. changes a lot for us. And God's plan for us is always better than our own. Yeah. Sometimes, like you said, it takes a little while to see it. But God's mm-hmm. plan is always better than our own. When I first went to work at my first church that I worked at, I was the pastor's secretary. And after one day, I got fired. And I wasn't one the day. kind of person. <laughs> one day. And they, they just said, you're not doing anything wrong, Joyce, but this just it doesn't feel right. Well, you know, that was almost even worse than them telling me. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't they make sense. Yeah, wrong. And uh, then after that, they ended up asking me to teach the women's Bible study. And mm-hmm. that was my beginning of public right. ministry. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I took the position as secretary just because I wanted to work there so bad. And it wasn't the right thing for me. So, you know, they didn't know why, but they didn't feel right about it. And uh, I felt right about it because I wanted it so bad. <laughs> you know, sometimes we can feel right about something or, or there's like a false peace you can have because you want something so bad. And yeah. then, you know, God just has to block you from getting it because it's not really where he wants you. And I would have been miserable. I would have made a miserable secretary anyway. You know? <laughs> Because I would have been trying to be the boss. <laughs> well, Joyce, I had a question for you. I always think about like how transparent you've been with your testimony about how you grew up and then your journey all the way through, you know, your first husband and then getting married again and going to ministry. But I always wondered, did you ever have a moment where you were maybe somewhat jealous of people that had a good uh, you know, a, a, a nuclear good family structure. Like, were you ever, even as an adult, because I've struggled yeah. with that, where I'm like, well, why didn't my story, even with my parents... Why didn't I have that kind of why childhood? Why didn't I have that kind of childhood? Yeah. Were yeah. you ever jealous yeah. of people and their, what looked like to be a, a happy family? You know, I don't remember seeing it as jealousy, but I remember being resentful. Like, mm-hmm. if I, if only I would have had good parents, then I wouldn't have these problems. Mm-hmm. If only yeah. I wouldn't have been abused and I wouldn't behave this way. Or I don't remember being jealous of any specific person, but I could have been jealous of anybody who, you know, was raised properly and, and I wasn't. I, I definitely went through some of that. I just went through it in maybe a little different way. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what? what you yeah. Did. I, I, I had to get all of the if onlys. I think we all yeah. go through that. Well, if only I had this and if only I had that. But the bottom line is, if you just really want to look straight at it and not shy away from it, is it is what it is. Yeah. And so I, I can't go back and be unabused. Yeah. Because I was. And so I have to deal with it the way it is. And I can still have just as great of a life, if not better. Mm hmm if I'll give the thing to God and let him use it for his glory. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. You know, what's so twisted in the way our, our minds work in, in the Christian world. Um, there have been times that I have been jealous of people who have outstanding testimonies. I have too. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Because you're like, well, I don't, I don't have a story mm-hmm. that God right. can use. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, right. So we, no matter where we are, we can find a reason to be jealous. Yeah. It doesn't have sure. to make sense. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's exactly right. I remember another woman sharing that with me that she just she told God, well, you know, I don't have a big testimony because I've had a good marriage. I've, I had good parents, and he said, well, your testimony is I've kept you. <laughs> yeah. So, mm-hmm. it's yeah. like yeah. we all we all do have a testimony. God just he deals with us in different ways. I think you guys are using my teaching today. What if? What do you do if God doesn't pick you? Mm-hmm. And um, in that teaching, I say that every, everybody has something and everybody doesn't have something. You know, there's there's none of us that has it all. Nobody mm-hmm. has it all. Like, I'm yeah. a great communicator, but I can't sing. You know, there's certain things that all of you, I mean, you can all say that. There's certain things that you, I mean, I know like Ginger, like you're, you're very creative, but you you can't cook. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> I thought you were trying to argue with her for a second. Oh, no. Don't. No, 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 she has me nailed. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I only know that because you told me. <laughs> it's not like I've experienced your cooking. I, just, <laughs> I love you too much for that. <laughs> yeah. I just know that anytime I come to your house, you've bought it somewhere else. <laughs> 
didn't cook it. But <laughs> that is it, true. I mean, it's really true. Everybody, everybody gets some things, and everybody doesn't get some right. things. And it's silly to not be satisfied with what God gave you because there's no place to get anything else. That's and, incredible, uh, really. Yeah. yeah. There's Actually, no John place to get what you want. Said other... that in John chapter three. Yeah. Where he said, "I must." decrease and he must increase and Mm -hmm. his disciples were jealous because jesus come on the scene people were flocking to him and he he said this is the gift the part that god's given me there's no way to get any other gift except from heaven and if heaven doesn't give it then you got to be content with with what you have so right it's you know a lot of people spend 90 percent of their time trying to strengthen their weakness so they can be like Mm -hmm. somebody else Mm -hmm. instead of spending you know, like if you spent that much time strengthening your strength, <laughs> yeah. yeah, then you could be super excellent at something instead of being maybe mm. halfway okay at something else. Yeah, Joyce, I love the stories you tell about how you tried to sew shorts, I think, or a sweater, <laughs> oh and God. cook and <laughs> grow tomatoes and stuff. Because I, I that get what so that bad. feels like. <laughs> I didn't really want to do any of it. I was just trying to be what I thought was a normal woman. Yeah, yeah. Because and, I really. Yeah was a little different, you know, than moms up and down the street that I knew. And, you know, they baked and sewed and had gardens and did all these things. And I just wanted to, you know, preach the gospel and rebuke the devil. And <laughs> <laughs> little things, and, uh, just little things like that. <laughs> you know, of course, the devil himself told me, you, you're really weird, you know. you just yeah. And we've all heard that just, from him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, you just need to go be a regular woman and, Especially, I was in a time then when I had stopped doing. I for five years I did a couple of home Bible studies, and that was my beginning in ministry. I taught about twenty five people in one, and maybe twenty in the other. And I felt like God said, told me I was to quit that. He's going to do something new. Well, you know, when God says He's going to do something new, you figure He's going to do it right away. Hmm. But for a whole year, I did nothing. It was hmm. like God just set me on a shelf, and there was nothing. And then I went to work at this church in St. Louis, and but I look back at that year now, and I wasn't doing anything, but God was doing a lot in me. He was getting me ready for the next promotion he had for me. But yeah. that was a tough year because that was when the devil kept telling me, "You just who do you think you are? You just need to settle down and be a regular woman. So it was during that year that I tried to sow and have a garden and, you know, all those things. Mm-hmm. And, of course, none of it turned out right because that wasn't what God had called me to do. But God was doing important stuff in your life yeah. to yeah, bring you was, where He wanted you to be. Yeah. You, you he also was teaching me how to be me. Yeah, you also talk about the difference when when we read the Bible in the promises that God gave different people and the covenants that He gave Him. The difference right. that you see, like <laughs> one person got a rainbow and another got something entirely different. Tell us about that. Yeah. Well, it, it, it it's interesting that Noah. God made a covenant with Noah, and of course Noah Noah built the ark in obedience to God. And when the all the rain was over and Noah got to come out of the ark, God gave him a rainbow as a sign of a covenant with him that it, that it would never be a flood like that again. So that was the sign of God's promise to him. Yeah. And then Abraham comes along, and God made a covenant with him, and his covenant was sealed with a circumcision. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. Those are very like, different very outcomes. Very different. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I'm sure most people know what a circumcision is, but it, it just really, it, it really represents the cutting away of the flesh. And so our covenant with God now is he doesn't want us to walk in the flesh. He wants us to learn to walk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In the spirit. Yeah. And, but it's a very interesting that Noah got a rainbow and Abraham got a circumcision. And I think most of us feel like, well, why didn't we get the rainbow that that person got? Right. Yeah. All I want is you the know? rainbows. Yeah. 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 Why, you know, everybody wants a rainbow. Nobody wants a circumcision. But there is a real <laughs> lesson in that, that God is going to give you what is best for you. And yeah. if we all really want to serve God like we say we do, then... We're really here to seek God's will and to do His will, not to tell God what we want and get mad if we don't get it. Yeah, I love it. I I love how you, um, how, you know, you kind of briefly just cut in, I cut in and said He was showing you how to be you, and mm-hmm. how yeah. at, at the root of jealousy is truly insecurity. Yeah, and once it, it, it and, yeah. and I'm learning that more and more. Like I find myself being less and less 
envious, jealous, or even wanting anybody else's story because I don't know what it cost. You mm-hmm. know, like I don't yeah. know what it cost. And you you said that, so I think it's so beautiful that you know you said that God in that time when I could have been so very jealous of someone. I, I understood that he was actually teaching me how to be me and showing yeah, me me. Yeah. So right. I think that's beautiful. The more confident you are, the less of all that stuff you experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, I don't, I don't think that you can keep yourself from being jealous if you're not confident in who you are in Christ. Yeah. And, you know, when I say in Christ, I want to make sure people understand that it's like when you receive Christ as your Savior— by faith, when you put your faith in Him, then the Bible considers you to be in Him, a joint heir with Him, and whatever He gets, you get. The Bible says in, in Romans 6 that we died with Him and we were raised with Him and we're now seated with Him in heavenly places. And so you have to learn how to identify by faith mm-hmm. with what the Bible says that you're in Him. And so who I am in Him and who I am in myself are two totally different things. You know, I'm not I'm not perfected yet in my behavior, but the Bible says that we're perfected in Him. I don't do everything right all the time, but the Bible says that we're right with Him through our faith in Jesus Christ. So it's pretty amazing when you really just sit and ponder that for a while. Yeah, it is. And if I question who I am or why I didn't get picked or why was I made this way, that's questioning how who God created. If I'm created in His image, who am I to question how He right. chose to design me? That's not my place to question. The God no, of the right. universe made yeah. me. He knew what He was doing. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's so yeah, good. And if you ever need a refresher course in that, just go read Job 38 through 42. Oh, it's my so very true. favorite. <laughs> so, I love just I a love smack down by God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, does God ever just tear Job up? Okay, Job, I'll tell you what. If you think you're so smart, sit down and look. <laughs> let me let me ask you a few questions, you know, because he'd been questioning God about why did all this happen? It's not fair and it's not right. And, you know, yeah, I do things right and look mm-hmm. at all the bad stuff that's happened to me. God said, "Okay, I'll tell you what. Now let me ask you a few things yep. before it takes <laughs> off." You know, like, do you know where I keep the lightning? Do you know where I keep wow. the hail? <laughs> yeah. And uh, by the time he's done, you're like, "Oh my gosh!" <laughs> <laughs> I wish okay, I could see Job's face. okay, you got <laughs> no it. No wonder Job said he he spoke without knowledge. I was like, yeah. <laughs> sure did. I for sure have had my my share of Job moments in this this past yeah. year and a half. But you know what yeah. what I've really been leaning into is in Philippians and Philippians four. I love the whole I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me part. part. Uh-huh. But when you go up a couple of scriptures, how it talks about right. wherever state you're in, like be there with contentment. Mm-hmm. Like it, right. so that and yeah. that that's taught me how to trust God more. So mm-hmm. learning right. how to be content and mm-hmm. accepting. This is what's happening right now. What is God doing in me now? And staying focused in that moment, you yeah. know, on that journey yeah. to who he's called me to be. Yeah, that's good. You know, for anybody who's listening, if you are having a problem with jealousy, just, just release that to God and just tell him, I don't really want what somebody else has. I want what you want me to have, because I can tell you whatever God wants you to have is going to be better for you right than you getting what somebody else has mm-hmm. yeah. because Great you know we, we want what somebody else has sometimes but yet we're not equipped to handle it you know i i know people have told me oh i wish i had a ministry like yours and i've, I've often <laughs> thought you, you don't have any idea what you're, you're even talking about you know those they'll, they'll see me in the pulpit for an hour and think oh how wonderful it is to be in front of all these people and everybody clap and cheer but they don't have any idea the hours and hours of work that goes into it or the judgment criticism you get when you're in front of that many people. It's like we really do lack knowledge when we're in that baby stage. You know, we think that we want things that we don't have any idea what the other side of it is. And there always is two sides to everything. And they may not even make us happy when we get them. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Well, no, if they're they not wouldn't. suited yeah. for us, if it's not God's no. plan for us, mm-hmm. it is not going to work. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you're not equipped to handle something, it'll crush you. Right, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, it, it won't make you happy. It'll crush you. So yeah. the best thing, I mean, you know, I always say, ask God for what you want. You can ask him for anything. But don't get mad if you don't get it, and don't be jealous of somebody else who does. And, right, yeah. You know, we go through that stage, too. I went through the stage of, I remember when a, a woman that was a friend of mine got something I wanted, and I, I mean, I just told guys, she doesn't deserve that. Mm-hmm. She's not nearly as spiritual as I am. Well, 
<laughs> that, that maybe didn't proves, sound very yeah. spiritual. <laughs> yeah, that proves why I didn't why I didn't get it. You know, I mean, my problem. We've was all been there. Pride. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I mean, I had a totally wrong attitude, and I, you know, I know now God gave it to her on purpose and made me look at it just to pull the junk out of me that was in me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I thought, well, she doesn't do this and she doesn't do that, and I do this and that. And, you know, she's not nearly as spiritual as me. Why did you give her what I wanted? Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, but it's good to hear we've all been there. It's not just yeah. me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's so but it's true. also good to know that we don't have to stay there. Once yes. we realize where we're at, we face it, we admit it, we repent of it, and then we can let God move us on to better places. Yeah. Yeah. So good. helpful, Joyce. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to talk to you. You yeah. too. We love you. <laughs> See you soon. Bye. 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 Oh, well, <laughs> this this is such a great conversation because no matter what it, it is that you didn't get that you wanted, no matter what you felt like God picked someone else for, I mean, there are so many real life examples. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to be married. I don't want to be married, mm-hmm. right? You know, I, I want to have this career. I, I want to have a child. These are yeah. real heartaches and and real examples of mm-hmm. people who are hurting, who mm-hmm. see other people flourishing. And you think, why? And right. and it's hard not to be jealous. So being able to talk through what it means for us in real life, how to deal with it, and the fact that God does still love us through those mm-hmm. disappointments and has so much good for yeah. us. Yeah. It it really yeah. helps. I had forgotten until you said that when I I have shared before that it took Mike and I a while a while to get pregnant with Caden. And so I remember I I would every it felt like every day I would go to work or I'd go to church or something and somebody else was gonna have a baby and I mm. you can handle that for a while yeah, and then hard. it would just be crushing. So I remember calling Mike so often and somebody else is pregnant. It was so hard and thinking, like I what more do you want from me? I Yeah whatever. So I, I remember a couple of my friends told me they were pregnant and God had me go back to them and apologize for being jealous. Mm -hmm. And when he asked me to do that, I thought, come on now, like they know me, they understand. I didn't say anything rude. Yeah. Yeah. But it was more of a heart thing for me. Mm -hmm. I needed to get to the place where I, I was trusting in him and it's okay that I wanted that, but I didn't need to be jealous of what somebody else had. Yeah. So I had to I had to call two people and ask them for forgiveness for being jealous of of me or me being jealous of them. Right. And they were obviously so kind, but that was a really big thing for me. God yeah. needed to work that out in me. I know a lot of friends that struggle with that that you know want to have children yeah. very badly. And I just want to say this, can all the church people stop asking all the people when they when they first yes. get married, when are you having kids? Yeah. Like yes. that is hard. Like mm-hmm. I I remember that. That's so much pressure and I I would love us to normalize not doing that. Yep. You know, because I think that's a really a good plan. A lot of yep. people are I'm like really like having difficulty having children. Mm-hmm. And so to have that extra pressure, that adds to that jealousy. Like sometimes our environments and people yeah. asking us all these questions or, you know, like honestly, yeah, I think if everyone right. just stays in their own business, then not worries about everybody else's business. Even you with like, them, that is me, an excellent I'm plan. Saying, like, like even with me, like with my situation, where's your husband? Oh, he left me. You know, like I don't want to talk about it. Like <laughs> let's just uh, say, how you doing? You know, you good? You know, I love you. You yeah. know, I, I don't know. It was a moment, but I feel you. It was valid. Moment. Thank you. Yeah, I just had to let that out. (laughs) Well, Joyce mentioned this teaching that she's been that she's been talking about. We're going to listen to a little bit, but we're offering this for anyone who wants it as a free resource, and it's so good. It's what to do when God doesn't pick you. So you can go to JoyceMeyer.org/slash/talkitout and grab that free resource. And we're going to listen to a little encouragement from that, just to give you another glimpse of it, and then we'll be back to talk about it. God's got a plan for you, and it's not like His plan for anybody else. And if you don't get what you want, when you want it, here's what God wants you to do. Serve the Lord with gladness. Psalm 100. A woman that used to work for me was just a very attractive woman, and she had never been married. She never even really dated that much. And we talked about it, and yeah, it was hard for her. But she said to me one day, she said, you know, I believe that God has just told me that my call is to serve him with gladness. And I thought that was so good. You know, if we don't get what we we want, can we be glad anyway? 
Can we still sing the song in the worst storm we've ever had? We need to trust God's decisions. Now let's look at something about Peter's life. John 21. These are some of, the, some of the scriptures that just helped me so much when I was going through so many of these things that I just did not understand. Things taking longer than they should have, watching other people get blessed and having to try to be happy for them. John 21, 14. This was now the third time that Jesus revealed himself appearing to the disciples after he was risen from the dead. And when they'd eaten, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these others do with reasoning, intentional, spiritual devotion? Three times he asked him the same question, Peter, do you love me? And then each time when Peter said, yes, Lord, I love you, he said, well, then feed my sheep, take care of my lambs. Feed my sheep, take care of my lambs. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you, feed my sheep. And my translation of that is, well, if you love me, then help somebody. I think the greatest way that we can show that we love God is to go help somebody else. Help somebody else find him or help somebody else get over their pain. And so then, and you know, I don't, I don't teach this very often because to be honest, you've got to be ready for a little depth in your walk with God before you're going to swallow this next scripture here. So after asking him three times, do you love me? Then he said in verse 18, well, I assure you, and most solemnly I tell you, when you were young, you girded yourself, you put on your own belt or girdle, and you walked about wherever you pleased to go. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hand and someone else will put a girdle around you and carry you where you do not wish to go. That's my reward for loving you? Look, when you were a less mature Christian, when you were a baby Christian, you kind of went around, did what you wanted to, and I blessed it. And... But now that you're more mature, it's not all about you anymore, Peter. Now I want to use you for my glory. Yeah. So many good scriptures in there. Yeah. When, you, yeah. when you think about that question that Joyce asked, can you still worship him even in your worst storm? Mm -hmm. You know, instead of looking outside at other people and thinking, well, their lives look good, when you have no idea what's really happening, can you still worship him even when you're going through your worst storm? That's, yeah. that's important. It's tough stuff. I remember the, the week I found out about all the things that happened that was happening in my marriage and in my family, the week... I found out like all the situations and who it was with was the week that we were supposed to start a worship revival. Mm -hmm. I was a worship pastor at a church here in St. Louis, and it was a whole revival surrounded by worship. I remember that. And I'm, I'm having to sing Waymaker, Miracle Worker. I'm having to sing mm -hmm. Surrounded. This is how I fight my battles. And I'm just like bleeding on the inside, like finding this stuff out. And yeah. so... It's, it's not an easy thing to do, you know, but I remember being on the platform, not just worshiping in my private time, but like literally having the, the weight of leading people mm. into the presence of God, like being a, 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 like the Judah first, like being the front runner to say like, let's worship God through. And they had no idea what I was dealing with, yeah. but it's not an easy thing to do. It's not. It's but not. But it, it, it encouraged me. Yeah. It's, it's what jump started my whole focus on Jesus through the whole process. So, and I if, get if it. you can just get a glimpse, if you can just start, even when you don't feel it, just start saying, I'll yeah. praise you, God, mm -hmm. even even if I don't get what I want. Mm -hmm. Something in your spirit begins to change and yeah. God yeah. begins to see that as an opening mm -hmm. for amazing things to happen. Yeah. So like good. you become softer towards the it's thing true, that he's yeah. doing and more yeah. you know, like you're looking for what he's doing in things. Yeah. It takes yeah. your attention off of you and it takes your attention off of the person you're jealous of. It does. <laughs> it just yeah, takes true. it puts your it that's all I was asking God. Put my attention on you. Don't let me yeah. look at the waves. Don't mm -hmm. let me look at the situation. Mm -hmm. Don't let me worry about what the next step's gonna be. Let me just keep my eyes focused on yeah. you. So yeah, it does. It takes your eyes off of the stuff and keeps your eyes on him. Yeah, you know, something. I told you that I had such a, a hard time with this, especially early in my career. And some of the things that, that really helped me, that, that God really taught me, was when I had the opportunity to become a leader, when I was leading people in these things that I had learned, mm -hmm. was instead of seeing it as my successes, I was able to shift that focus like you're talking about, mm -hmm. put that focus on God and His 
his asking me to lead other people into their success. Mm -hmm. Because if instead you're focusing on leading others well and seeing them succeed, Mm -hmm. then you don't have that jealousy. Everybody's wins are together. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes such a huge difference. And the other part is I really learned that God owes me nothing. He does not owe me a thing. And yet he blesses me in so many ways yeah. that that it's overwhelming. And yeah, I don't always get what I want. And God picks other people for things that I wanted him to pick me for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he owes me nothing. Mm-hmm. And if instead I can focus on what he does want me to do in my own life, for other people, as, as a leader, as a worshiper, all those things, I begin to see those blessings that he had in mind yeah. that are maybe very different that I had in mind, but that jealousy instead is like a pit that just sucks you out of all that Mm -hmm. good stuff. It sucks your peace. It takes your joy away. But when that shift in focus begins to happen, it it changes everything. That's so true. There's a verse I wanted to share with you guys, um, Psalm 17, 8. It says, keep me as the apple of your eye, hide me in the Mm -hmm. shadow of your wing. And what stood out to me in that scripture, I, I remember years ago, like I I wanted to be married, and it felt like all my friends were getting picked, and I wasn't. And I thought, I'm going to be the last one, and that's just the way that God wants me to be, and I'm not His favorite, so He has nobody (laughs) for me. I felt God so clearly say to me, Aaron, what I want is I am pulling you to my chest. Mm. And I have my hand upon you, So, and the rest of the world, the other men who are not for you, I am pushing them away. So you stay close to me, you rest your head on my chest, and I will push them away until the right <laughs> the right one comes in, and I will bring him in at the right time. But it was it was God's like overwhelming so love beautiful. for me yeah. that it's not that I'm not picking you. This mm-hmm. is not, it's, this is because I've picked you. Yeah. Because I picked you, I want to make you wait for the right thing at the right time for your child, for your husband, for whatever it is. And and it helps me see God in a different way. It's not because He's mean and cruel and doesn't want me happy. It's the exact opposite. Yeah, you're chosen. So, it's, it's exactly beautiful when you figure out that all of the stuff that's happening is because you're chosen, and there is a hand tailored manuscript book that's yours. Yep. Yeah, and He's taken so much time because even with all the ups and downs in life, not being picked. Being picked, being picked, and then not being picked. Yep. <laughs> like me. But like there is the variety a variety of all of yep. the picks and all that stuff. There is beauty at the end of the story. And yeah. I think of Joyce with her story. It's like, had she not gone through all of the not being picked, you know, and not being yeah. l- loved by her, her dad, like just we wouldn't be sitting here mm-hmm. being able to share right. this on this platform. Like, so you think about the beauty at the end of the story and trust that. Like you are mm-hmm. the apple of his eye and you're chosen. And that's yeah. what you are picked. It's the opposite. Like you might yeah, not have so been picked true. by man, but you're picked by it's God. So picked by God. Yeah. So. We even look at God's love as something that we can be jealous of. We see it in other people's lives and we yeah. think God loves them more. Yeah. And when we can really let that word soak into our hearts of how he loves us more than we could count the grains of sand. That's how often he thinks of us every day, that he would do anything for us. And when our heart breaks, his heart breaks, mm-hmm. and his plan for us is good mm-hmm. even yeah. through that. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, what else can you say but wow? And if all of our friends right now could grab that, yeah. yeah. It would be incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or Mm -hmm. think. So if we thought we were supposed to get that job or we thought we were supposed to get that man or we thought we were supposed to do have that certain body or thought we supposed like and somebody else Mm -hmm. like just think of what you want what you desire and he can he's gonna top it. Every time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's my belief. And I believe this year is going to be the year where I'm going to start seeing the topping. I'm declaring that and I believe it. So yeah. believe it with me. Yeah. 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 That's good. I'll believe it with you. Okay. I know you will. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do it with you. <laughs> thank you both so much. Well, really good you. stuff. Really yeah. Good. It was really good. You guys are you guys are fun to talk to. You are too. <laughs> Even when you had bird poop on your glasses <laughs> in your dream. <laughs> Thank the Lord, it was only a dream. I just imagine you sat straight up, like I did. What is I did. It was like Where what? Yeah, and then you're wide awake. Anyway, back to the important stuff. We want to remind you. 
pick up that free resource. It is called What to Do When God Doesn't Pick You. Go to JoyceMeyer.org slash talk it out and you can get the free resource there. Um, you can also find out more about the podcast and you can sign up for our friends list, get some yes. fun behind the scenes stuff. You can catch up on episodes maybe you haven't seen yet. So we hope everybody will do that. And please subscribe to the podcast. Tell your friends about it. All those fun things. We love you all so much. So we'll see much. you next time. Bye.